Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jack Mini Trades back here again with another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at a head-to-head -head comparison between two devices that I've covered pretty extensively on this channel before. And of course I'm talking about the Enreal layer on one side of the ring and the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K projector on the other side. This may initially sound like a bit of a strange comparison to you until you realize that they're both portable projectors, although they do cater to very, very different markets and different lifestyle needs. So with that being said, there are some things that may, one may offer over the other that you will definitely want to pay attention to. So in this comparison, we're going to be talking about screen size, brightness, usability, setup, gaming performance, and price. So smash that like button, hit subscribe if you aren't already, and if you want to pick anything that I discuss in this video up, definitely make sure that you use the links down below in the description, as it does help out the channel a little bit, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's get straight into it. Starting off here with the screen size, the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K can really vary depending on how close or far you put it from your wall or projector screen. Personally, I've used this with a 12 foot 144 inch professional screen with a gain of 1.2 and had no issues at all but i've also used it up against the wall and again have no issues at all although you can with a wall theoretically make this as big as you want or as small as you want one thing that you definitely have to make sure that you are aware of is that with larger screen sizes you need to make sure that you have a really good control over your ambient light as it will be needed in order to maintain a pleasing image with a good contrast ratio. In particular, if you start getting into very, very large screen sizes, you're going to run into a very poor, uh, dim looking display. If you close the blinds, if you black the windows out, all of that stuff, you're going to have an extremely pleasing image with a pretty good contrast ratio. So just be aware of that. In contrast, though, the X-Real Air quotes a screen size of 201 inches at 15 feet from the screen, which is somewhat misleading to people who don't read the fine print. So as I had mentioned in my previous videos, which you can find links to right up here, at six feet, the screen size uh, for a widescreen movie is approximately 80 inches across. So that's still a pretty large screen and I don't think that you'll be disappointed with it, but it is just something to be aware of and to note. And another thing is that the X real airs, unlike the Nebula, are not able to rescale that screen as long as you're using just a standard mirror display mode. If you get into the Nebula apps, you can actually change the screen size, but we'll get into that a little bit later. There are some drawbacks that come with using that app. So getting into the brightness, the Nebula can project an image with uh, 1840 ANSI lumens, which is extremely bright. That allows for high contrast 4K HDR content to be displayed. The x -Real, on the other hand, has a peak brightness of around 400 nits, which is roughly equivalent to 700 ANSI lumens. So here we can see that the Nebula also beats out the x -Real by a fairly substantial margin. But with that being said, one thing that you should note is if you care about high contrast ratio, the x -Real is far better than the Nebula, considering that it's using micro OLED technology where the Nebula uses laser technology. Micro OLED basically just means that you can fully turn off pixels that are not in use, where the Nebula cannot do that. So that's just something to be aware of. As far as usability though, these are both technically projectors that are portable. Their modes of operation are very, very different, and each offers its own unique advantages and disadvantages. So starting off with the Nebula, this is obviously a full-scale projector with a built-in 30-watt speaker, and it can be only powered through AC power. This immediately limits its utility for on-the-go use, even though it is a travel projector, it is notable that the lack of battery means that unless you have access to a very beefy battery backup that's capable of outputting right around 200 watts or so, you're going to be extremely limited as to where you can use this when you're out and about. Further, since this is a classic projector, you're going to need a surface to project onto, and in a public space, that's likely not going to happen. And even if it is, you probably don't want to project your movies for everybody in the world to see it's kind of rude. So, um, in my mind, this is a great device for using within your home, like taking it from one bedroom to another or to a movie room, things like that. I think you'll definitely be happy if you use it in that way. And another thing that I also want to note before we move on here is that there is a single quarter 20 inch threaded hole on the bottom for mounting a quick release plate. So on mine, I used a Lanzi F38 system, but it 
also works well with any other type of system that's out there. Most of them are quarter 20, so you can get away with that. And if you put it onto a tripod, you can adjust the height, you can make sure that it's level, all of those things. So I would definitely recommend using a tripod or at least like a light stand or something like that. Just make sure that it's capable of handling about 15 pounds of weight. The X-Reel on the other hand is not limited to use within the home theater setup. In fact, this device can be used anywhere and in any circumstance you find yourself in. This makes the X-Reel perhaps one of the most amazing travel companions to come out in recent years. You don't need a battery, you just need to have a host device like a laptop, smartphone, or tablet with a USB-C capable of outputting DisplayPort Alt Mode, which is basically the ability to transmit display information over USB-C, which covers most devices. The X-Reels also have built-in speakers that sit right behind your ears, although one thing that I have to make very clear is that they're pretty poor in quality. I would highly recommend using just Bluetooth headphones if you have access to them, but they will work in a pinch. Further, the X-Rail Air also offers the Nebula app for Android and a beta version for Apple Silicon, Macs, and Windows. Although I haven't really been able to test the Windows out yet, it's very hard to figure out how to download that, so I haven't really played around with it at all. But the application allows you to place up to three virtual monitors in fixed positions throughout space. You can also vary the position, make it closer, make it further. You can also make the screen size larger or smaller. And so that's something that's pretty cool. But one thing that I really have to emphasize here is that a huge limitation of this is that there's significant flickering on white surfaces. So if you're using Google Docs or Microsoft Word or other things like that that have a lot of white on them, you're going to experience a lot of flickering. It's gonna be pretty uncomfortable, distracting, and annoying. So I don't really use this too much, but I have used it for a couple of hours from time to time, and it does work quite well. It's just that flickering can be a little bit of an annoyance. In contrast though, the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K just runs standard Android TV 10, and it functions perfectly in everything that it does with no issues as you would expect. You can also use it with HDMI devices if you wish, so if you like the Apple TV interface or if you want to play games with a gaming PC or a Steam Deck or something like that, you can absolutely do that on the Cosmos Laser 4K, which is a very welcome feature and it makes it really versatile in my opinion. Although I personally don't have any issues with it, it should be noted that the Nebula and Unreal Air both use DLP technology, so some people do experience a rainbow effect when they move their heads around quickly. This is something that only affects a small portion of the population though, so if it doesn't affect you, don't worry about it. The X-Reel also exhibits some screen door effect at its 1080p resolution, which is not really terrible, but it is something to be noted. The Nebula though, I haven't experienced any screen door effect whatsoever. It's extremely sharp with its 4K resolution. On the topic of picture issues, there are three notable ones that I have to mention for the X-Reel before moving on. Number one is if you use glasses like myself, it's highly uncomfortable to use your prescription lenses behind these to see your picture. One thing to note is that you cannot use these without glasses if you're nearsighted and that's because of the optical setup that they've used to make the screens appear as large as they do. So you are going to need glasses, and if you do want to pick these up, I would definitely recommend checking the links down in the description below for the VR Optician, or using my coupon code Jack of Many Trades to get 5% off of your order. They are a German-based company that uses Zeiss Optics. Their optical quality is outstanding, some of the best that you'll get, perfectly clear, and they will last you for a very, very long time. They are very well engineered and their customer service is outstanding. Now, you are at the mall, huh? So why do you not head over to Orange Julius? Call up my friend Samir. Oh, tell him you are now my homeboy. He will hook you up. So definitely check them out if you're in a situation like I am. The other issue that I want to talk about with these is that if you use them for a long period of time, like say watching a two or three hour movie, I found that my eyes start feeling quite fatigued after that period of time. Although it's comfortable when you first start out, over that period of time they do start to get uncomfortable and that's a little bit frustrating. Um, especially when you take them off, I find that I have to rub my eyes a little bit. You know, it's just not, and it's also not like watching on a projector like the Nebula where you have no eye fatigue whatsoever. 
The last thing that I really don't care for are the ear hooks. These, in my opinion, are way too short. They don't wrap well around my ears, and I find that the clamping force is extremely strong, and it gets very uncomfortable when you use them for a very long period of time. With that being said, though, if you wear something like a hat, that can take the uh, clamping force off of your ears and make it a non-issue. Although it's one thing that you should <clears throat> Although it should be noted that wearing a hat is not always feasible because it could be too hot out. But that's a workaround that I found. Moving on to gaming. For this test, I'm going to show you some slow motion 120 FPS video of me playing on both the Unreal Airs and on the Cosmos Laser 4K. So you can get a sense of what the input latency is like. Input latency to those of you who don't know is basically the time that it takes you to give an input on say a controller and have it appear on the screen. Now although both of these projectors have a pretty fast refresh rate of 60 Hz, which is basically industry standard, the input latency may be up to 20 or 30 or 40 milliseconds depending on what mode you're in with the Nebula. If you are not in gaming mode the response time is horrible. In gaming mode, it's supposed to increase response time, so we're definitely gonna be testing that out. So starting off our comparison here with our test case, we have the Razer Blade 15 inch advanced with a 360 hertz display, and this comes in with latency of only 25 milliseconds, so this is gonna be our baseline. Now taking a look at the Unreal Airs, we can see that we get a 32 millisecond response time, which is quite fast, so you're definitely gonna have a great experience on this device. Finally, here we are in gaming mode on the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K, and you can see that we get a 75 millisecond response time, which is a little bit slow, but it's not bad. You're not going to have a horrendous experience at 75 milliseconds. But turning it back to the standard picture profile, you can see that we have a response time of 108 milliseconds, which is extremely noticeable and makes this very unusable. And so finally, let's talk about price. For the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K, this retails for $19.99, but it frequently goes on sale for between $1,600. $1,700. So it is quite an investment, but with that being said, I think that with this projector, it punches well above its weight class for what it is and what it provides to you. And I feel like if you really love cinema, that this will be an outstanding addition to your setup and it'll serve you well for years to come. On the other hand, if you want to pick up the Unreal Airs today, they retail for just $379. Although that's not exactly cheap, it's far less expensive than you would pay for the Nebula, and it allows you to use the big screen wherever you go, rather than being stuck to a wall or a projector or an outlet. So with that being said, I hope you guys got a lot out of this video and definitely make sure that you drop a comment down below. Do you have either one of these devices? What do you think? What do you like about them? What do you dislike about them? I'd love to hear that. Also remember to drop a like if you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed my content and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.